guys, uh, how are you doing? Uh, it's time for another stereo talk live here from Prague. And I hope you are doing well and you're ready because it's gonna be fun, of course. I have a really special guest here today, and uh, you might know him for some of his big hits like his remix uh, for See the Sun. So let me welcome Mr. Dan Stone. Oh, hey man. Hello, hey. mate. How you doing? You good? Yeah, man. All good. All good. How are you? Yeah, I'm fine, thanks, mate. Fine, thank you. Yeah. So, hey. guys, this is Dan Stone, and man, uh, so uh, you're from UK, right? Yeah, from the UK, in South Beach, oh. just on the coast. Ah. So, yeah. so, and how is it over there right now? Like over here, we are still in the lockdown. So, how is it in the UK? Yeah, pretty much a similar thing over here, really. To be honest, um, yeah, everything's sort of well. You know, you get your kind of hour to get out and exercise and you know go and do your food shopping every day um but that's kind of kind of it at the moment really to be honest so yeah it's just like everyone getting into a routine isn't it you know a daily routine so so what do you do what is your daily routine then it's, it's but mostly it's actually in the studio now because um because i have a day job as well um i've i've been sort of furloughed from my day job which means that I'm not working for them now for the next few months, so um, which is which which is which is sad. But it also means that I can use the time that I've got to crack on and almost be a full time producer <laughs> for a few months. So yeah, I kind of get to basically write music every day now, which is great. Yeah, good, it's good fun. So so yeah. what did you, so what what is actually your daily job? Then well, I, I work, actually I told you 100 percent only on music. So what's your daily job? I work. I work as a like art worker designer for an advertising company near where I live. I've been with them for about fifteen years now. So uh, they're a great bunch of guys, and yeah, we, 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 you know, we have a good laugh, and yeah, it's uh, yeah, it's good. It's, uh, it's you know, it's, it's not always yeah. easy balancing the two jobs with the music as well. But you know, um, yeah, I certainly wouldn't change it at all. And you guys, you probably don't know about it, but earlier today I, I was sending the flyer for Stereo Talk to Dan, and I mean, <laughs> he's a uh, he is a designer. So, so then, what are what were your feelings when you saw the flyer and my Photoshop skills? Do you want me to be honest or just? Sort of yeah, of course, case? be honest, man. Like it's did... nine minutes, so go for it. Well, when when you told me that you spent about ten minutes doing it, I was like, okay, that's fair enough. But um, I did have a little chuckle to myself when um, when you sent it to me because I just looked at it and thought, that's not my leather jacket. That's not my white t-shirt. <laughs> and you just stuck my head on the on was it your body was it your no 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 i just i just basically googled the leather jacket and <laughs> just cut the guy's head off and put it <laughs> in, you know well you know you're a dj so you should wear you know a leather jacket and yeah yeah I, I I remember, I i'll order one yeah yeah i remember last time we saw each other was on a uh, dream state in uh south california for yeah. the event. and i think you were wearing a leather jacket right no it was kind of like a it's like a uh, what do you call it? It's sort of like mid-season, sort of you know, not leather, just sort of yeah, fabric yes, and sort of jacket. Cool. You know? We were both looking really cool, right? That's right. Well, I don't <laughs> know. I'm maybe more you than me, mate. I was just—I remember being so cold in the evenings. I didn't bring the right coat with me, so I was just, <laughs> yeah, it was so so cold at night, there, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. It was actually it was supposed to be what like still like midwinter yeah not closing in on winter but come on it's california so you would expect you know when they have cacti you know everywhere exactly. you expect exactly. it's gonna be really warm but it was super cold i remember i actually caught cold and then i was flying to mexico and it just felt sick all week it was horrible oh, so, so, so when, we're about, when we're talking about gigs like you you're basically touring the world ever since we started right like you've been on anjuna beats before from like 2019 and touring a lot and now you're home don't you miss touring yeah yeah of course i do yeah yeah it's um you know for me it's it's maybe not you know of course i, I absolutely love touring that's it's amazing um but i wouldn't i wouldn't i wouldn't change any other way but when you have another job as well you're kind of um you soon get you soon get into reality again once you finish the touring and you're back straight doing you know yeah you're doing a great job as much as i enjoy that job as well that kind of takes you away from the kind of touring world um <laughs> so um I, you're, you're able to kind of switch your mind straight back into work again but yeah i do i do miss it i miss the fact that, that we get to see the world pretty much um and uh, all right maybe it's only for one or two nights but it's 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 something isn't it and we're we're, we're very privileged to be doing what we're doing to be honest um and getting to to play to some amazing people across the world so as cheesy as it sounds but that's true. true that's basically 
is basically how we met, thanks to music, right? Music yeah, exactly. Connects yeah. People. And uh, so I, I mentioned something about the Antuna beats, and I remember it was like back in 2009, I guess. Yeah. And I saw your man uh, name popping up in top 10 on Beatport, you know, all the charts like Dan Stone, you know, Daniel <laughs> Trinity and all these guys. So how, uh, if you would compare like uh, the trans music from back then, 2009, and now the scene, what, what are your thoughts on that? Oh, that's, yeah, it's always, it's always a tricky one because it's, it's always evolving, isn't it? Every year it's a kind of a different feel. But I guess back then uh, it was more about, uh, it sounds weird saying this, but it's probably more melody focused back then. Um, then nowadays it's more about the sounds and there's a lot more techier stuff that's popular these days um, where it had a more of a, maybe a slightly more of a kind of purer feel about it back then. Um, and um, yeah, that's kind of when I was really sort of really getting stuck into it. Kind of just those melodies from stuff that what Angina were doing and other labels. Um, I felt that that was a, yeah, that, that sort of time, you know, in trance really. So, yeah. 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 Wow. Yeah, I would never thought about that. So, so is this the reason why you started the Fables label just to keep it melodic? Yeah, yeah, pretty much. Yeah, you know, um, myself and Ferry, you know, uh, well, it's all started with Faddy's idea to you know approach myself and Ferry about doing it because we were doing you know similar sort of styles and similar sounds, and then it felt like the right combination to be honest. And yeah, you know, we said, yeah, let's give it a whirl and give it a shot. And um, yeah, it's been a good three, four years, three years, yeah. So. Um, yeah, we've we've it's been it's been a nice graduation. Um, we've got some great artists on the label. Um, yeah, and we just try and keep it. Yeah, the more melodic, uplifting side of of of, of the FSOE sort of team, really. So, yeah. uh, and uh, and how 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 is the label doing right now? Yeah, it's good. Just... Yeah, we, yeah, it's good. Um, like I said, you know, the touring side obviously for everyone is is this the, the tough side, but we've you know we've got a, a select group of people, artists on the label that kind of are regularly kind of releasing with us um you know it's, it's not always easy to get a massive group but when that's why it's important to to really try and nurture some of the up and coming artists as well so mm. that they can kind of you can kind of grow with them and you know it makes it interesting as well having slightly different names on the label yeah. so yeah it's it, it's not easy um on that side but um, I think we're so, slowly starting to get there and get getting some regulars in but um yeah some you know well, just trying to well, keep well, it up just uh, starting this year, just before this Corona thing started, you guys actually had a stage on one of the major festivals yeah, in Thailand, yeah. right? Yeah, so well, tell us more, more about that. Well, it was, you know, it was our first time. Um, I mean, I, I didn't really expect this to happen, but when, you know, when we spoke to Lon, it was, um, a lot of it was kind of fronted by, um, you know, Ferry Tower was, I think he knows Lon a lot, a lot more than I do. So they were in a lot of discussions with him and his management. And um, yeah, to to be able to host our own stage the whole night it wasn't yeah. just the fact that it was one stage and a you know a, you know on a many three or four different stages it was the only stage of the night so um yeah a massive jump for us because we we've only had three fables nights before that um globally so to suddenly be fronting our own stage on a saturday um sorry friday <laughs> It was uh, incredible, especially when you've got a massive, massive label like, you know, uh, you know, like Seven and Askew and all the big boys playing the night before. You know, it's it's a tough, you know, it's a tough gig, but um, the response was amazing. And the view, you know, to play on the beach in you know, in Thailand, Phuket, is um, not something you do every day. So, uh, oh, yeah, yeah, it was um, an amazing, amazing experience and more so an amazing achievement, really, for all of us and all the DJs that played for us that night. It was, it was definitely one for the books, definitely. Oh, man. I, I played there the year before and that Paradise yeah. Beach in Phuket is just out of this world. It's really like the one of the best beach parties I ever played at. And it's actually really nice that you guys had a chance, you know, to present the label. And I saw yeah. the pictures. It was absolutely crowded. Yeah, that no, so, amazing. Uh, it's, well, it's well, amazing. Yeah, you don't, you don't, you know, you see bit beach parties and stuff like that. But when you actually, when you're actually there... And you actually see the view, and you see the sea, and just the ah, oh, just it's just yeah, it's a, it's a different world, isn't it? Really? Yeah, it is. <laughs> and then, so uh, I read your bio, and I saw something that you started DJing at the age of eighteen, right? Yeah. So, uh, uh, did you have any special DJ name before then? No, Stone? no, literally, I was literally as boring as it sounds. I've been literally just Dan Stone all the way through. Um, 
Oh, yes. I told you. I told you would say something like a den the man, you know. Something <laughs> like that. No, unfortunately, it's nothing. Uh, it's nothing rock and roll like that, unfortunately. But yeah, um, started off doing the local clubs. Um, in, you know, here I live in Norwich. And, yeah. yeah, eighteen, and um, just playing. I, you know, I'll be the first to admit I played a lot of different genres of dance music. That's what kind of started me off in the DJ mm. kind of world first. You know, playing stuff back then in the mid to late nineties that was you know speed garage house. You know, um, and obviously trance as well. But yeah, um, I went through an area of playing a lot of disco house sets as well. Um, mm. I ended up being a resident for a, a few years in a club playing funky house. So yeah, I was quite into all different styles. I even had a a big love for garage music for two step. I absolutely love garage at one point. So uh, I, I have no idea what garage is. And maybe cool. some of our viewers also don't know what's garage. Well, can you tell us what the commercial garage? front? It was the kind of classic Craig David sort of stuff, you know. Um, you heard of you know DJ Luck and MC Neat, the Artful Dodger, um, <laughs> you know that sort of sound back then was um, was kind of two step sound. Um, was the sound that yeah I quite enjoyed and I quite enjoyed mixing it as well because it was a different tempo. You know, and uh, yeah, it's just good fun. It was just good fun back then. So ah, yeah, have you ever thought in incorporating this into your productions nowadays? <sighs> yeah, I don't. I haven't really thought about it. Yeah, it's a good question because um, yeah, I don't know how it would come out or sound, but it's definitely something to think about. Um, different inspirations from from you know a few decades ago. That sounds really old, but uh, yeah. Um, yeah, it's definitely yeah. something that I would probably think I, about. I, I, see, I see somebody in comments is actually saying that Garage is now dead. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> well, yeah. you never know, maybe Dan Stone will revive it with a trans garage. Yeah, so, yeah, you, you, you never trans know. Garage, but that was a long time ago, Garage, you know, kids, yeah. that was two decades ago, so, you know. <laughs> well, you know, trans is two decades ago and maybe three decades and it's still here, so uh, yeah. we are doing something good, I would say. Yes, yeah, it's, it's amazing. We seem to have our own kind of little trance sounds cheesy i don't say trans family but we do have a kind of niche of followers that die hard followers aren't they yeah we have, a, we, we, have, we have a very strict trans mother <laughs> <laughs> yeah one yeah. decade only <laughs> <laughs> oh by the way guys watching now if you want to ask any questions to dan or me just uh Put it in the comments and my assistant uh miss reorder will actually tell me the the, the question <laughs> Because I can't keep up. It's, it's, it's like really crazy right now. But uh, let's keep away from the music. And um, so now you obviously have a, a lot of free time. You're not going to your daily job. So you, so you do loads of music. But what do you do in your free time? I, 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 again, it's, it's not, you know, it's not rock and roll. But I really think it's important to, to keep up the exercise. Um, you know, everyone's doing it. Obviously, everyone's getting out and doing the running. And, and I'm, I'm completely no different to that. I'm trying to get out there running every other day um I, I always was a quite keen runner anyway not competitively but just i love to stick my headphones on just get away in the countryside and i'm quite privileged to live out here in the countryside so i can sort of get away and pretty much be on my own um but um <laughs> that side i've always um, enjoyed so i'm trying to keep that going um when before the lockdown i was i was a keen boxing trainer as well i, I trained i trained a lot in boxing i boxed for a a good 10 years um I never sure fought worried. never actually fought but i've done a lot of training and sparring over the years so and that's one thing i really do miss i miss that a lot um and because that's, that's a massive um mental boost and things like yeah. that so um but yeah it's kind of more exercise based really you know mm -hmm. apart from the usual tv films and you know <laughs> chilling out um that's 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 i like to cheat that because i think it's important to just to, you know it's, it's important for the mind you know so so, I actually yeah, had, no, I had no idea that you are into running, you know, I, I yeah. know. or boxing. Yeah, no, like, not, you not know, seriously, I, just, just, I just always used it as part of the boxing training exercise or sometimes do some circuit training and gym work as well. But um, yeah, I've always done the running and boxing over the years because that's just, mm -hmm. that's just great mentally as well as it is. And it's a damn good workout as well. So, yeah. <laughs> Have you ever attended any boxing matches? Yeah, yeah. I've attend I'm not... Um, not any massive ones like the AJ fights and stuff like that, but I've attended a, a few local kind of, um, you know, pro fights that the guy that trains me, he sort of trains a lot of professionals as well. So it's, it's just, just a privilege to be getting in the ring with him every week and just doing pad work because he's such a great trainer and got such a massive reputation. So mm. yeah, I've been to a few fights and seen, you know, a few of my 
kind of people that I train alongside to fight. So yeah, it's quite a it's quite an interesting buzz to watch, especially when it's the people you train with and you know. Yeah, um, just just tell me, are you, are you wearing helmet? Because you know, imagine that <laughs> you go to a match on Friday, yes, yeah, yeah, and then and on Saturday you're going to play a gig and you come with blue eye. You know, and like what happened to you? Oh, no. Yeah, yeah, we always make sure it's, it's all it's all very well it's all very well done it's all and it's all very safe so um, as safe as it can be obviously but yeah you know always wear a head guard and you know it's all it's all done properly so um, but yeah no try not to get a smack on on the nose or the eye. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, somebody here says that he likes to love boxing, which is nice. I can ask some questions here. There is somebody who is actually keep asking about one thing. They are asking about Kevin and Perry. And that they need more of that style. What can you tell us about that? Kevin and Perry. Well, that's kind of going to the the kind of the golden era of France, isn't it? The kind of ninety nine, yes. you know, the Agnelli and Nelson, the Signum, the Lands, the sort of that sort of sound. Um, which, yeah, I think someone posted something about this the other day about bringing back the kind of old the hmm. old sound. But it's tricky because it's kind of how you go about doing that without it sounding old. You know what I mean? As us as producers, it's kind of about how to make it sound fresh, but also reminiscing back to that feel. Maybe it's more about the, the top end, you know, the melodies and the kind of the atmospheres of before, but then with a kind of more modern groove, I suppose. Maybe, maybe that's an idea. I don't know. Mm. Well, I noticed like during my live streams on uh, YouTube, Twitch, Facebook, yeah, I noticed that people actually enjoy more of the melodic stuff. And yes. uh, maybe, you know, well, when we play on gigs, we sometimes are forced to play harder stuff, you know, just to keep people going. But I noticed actually now on this live stream, this melodic music actually gives people some, you know, hope that we will actually get through this and uh, yeah. they really enjoy it. So maybe we are coming to this era where this will come back and people will be just more into more melodic music, which makes more sense, you know, like playing one key melodies all the time is... You know, you only have 12 nodes and few octaves and then you're out of melodies, yeah. you just push one. Yeah. And, and also when, you, when you're producing the harder, techier club music, it's not, in this situation right now, it's not, like you just said, it's not always as appropriate and you mm. can't obviously test them out in the clubs right now. So yeah, like you said, the more melodic side, maybe it's something a bit more popular, you know. Uh, yeah, these true. Who knows? You have to be patient, don't we? We have to see it all, it all evolves and it moves along. So we have to just, you know, see what happens. Yeah, I, I guess we will see, but I'm pretty, I'm pretty actually sure that people will go and form a more melodic after all this, because these are dark ages, and after dark ages, people just want to have something, you know, fresh oh, and melodic, yes. full of yeah. hope. That always helps. Now, now, one question I actually have here is, uh, when this lockdown is over, and you can go out, and you can do anything you want, what would be the first thing you will do? Well, probably... I'll probably go out for uh, we'll probably go to a restaurant with my with my girlfriend because we we often it's all enjoy going to um uh, we live quite near a beach like twenty minutes from the beach and there's some really nice restaurants there so that will probably be the first thing we'll do to be honest um just to get out nice walk on the beach and just yeah have some nice food and yeah uh, but as for how long that will be I don't know because restaurants are not looking like they're going to be open for quite some time so well over yes. here anyway but we'll see well you know what's uh, uh, one funny thing over here in Czech Republic they are planning to open restaurants just the gardens outside so you can right. see yeah and, and but we are still forced to wear the face mask when we go out so right. that was my question you know like okay so we can go eat but how can you eat if you're <laughs> covered you can't can you that's the thing you know, sometimes yeah. it makes no sense yeah. And uh, how is it in the UK? It's like still complete lockdown. Like over here, we already have some loosening up. For example, today I had my first Starbucks coffee after two months, just uh, through the window. Yeah, I mean, we, I'm, 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 I've tried, been trying to keep up to date with the news every day, but I'm also trying not to keep up to date. That sounds really bad, but just a positive sort of mentality. I'm trying to just yeah. get on with the day. Um, but at the moment, it's kind of still pretty similar. I think the lockdown is going to continue for another couple more months. But and I think things will start to um, start to loosen gradually. But um, nothing sort of dramatic right now, um, obviously. Yeah. And I think it's probably, you know, I know everyone has their opinions, but I think it's probably a good thing so that at least, you know, we can make sure that this virus is kind of, um, yeah, um, out of the way um, or, or, you know, exits a lot quicker yes. than, than it should do. But, you know, I'm not an expert, but, you know, at the moment, I think it's not an yeah. You know, I, I was telling you, I, w I was watching news, like reading it every morning, and yeah. after a couple of weeks, I just became like really distant from yeah. all these bad news. I was like, yeah, 
still the same. Nothing for me. I think you have to. I think you have to distance yourself sometimes. So obviously, keep up to date and know what's going on, but you, you have to do it for yourself. You know, you have to sort of, you know, go and do your own thing to, to keep yourself in, in a positive yeah. mindset, really, isn't it? So. Well, let's switch to the music a little. So yeah. you, said, you said you have loads of free time and <laughs> loads yes. of music. So tell us, what are we going to expect from you in the near weeks, months, years? Maybe yeah, how so I've, um, I've got the, the next single comes out on May the 22nd. Um, I was going to post the artwork today, so I'll probably do it later. Um, but it's on episode in Maine. Um, it's very much probably my, probably my mo most toughest track groove wise um, um still got elements of my, myself my sound and the breakdown but it's a lot more about you know the sort of techie drop and stuff like that it's very similar to um like my my kind of stuff on fso like tomorrow and my stone and terminal remix it's going to be sort of that end of toughness and I, i like to keep it like that for the for the main label um so that's coming out in may um which i'm looking forward to it's called placebo um and i've also been working whilst we have this time, I've been kind of going back to my progressive trance roots, um, the kind of slower 128 sort of BPM stuff. And um, yeah, I've kind of almost finished a couple of tracks, um, which will be coming out. One of them will be coming out around sort of August time. Um, I can't say too much about the sort of label, but it's, it's signed, which is great news. And I have interest in the other one. So it's mm. quite a nice feeling to know that even though I've put a lot of hard work into the, my progressive side, progressive trance side, um, it's it's gone quite well, better than I expected. So, um, you know, and this, you know, I've had some good feedback, good constructive feedback from labels. Um, mm -hmm. But I've just, I said to myself this year that I would make sure that I would just be a bit more variety, um, not just about the stuff that I release on Fables. I wanted to kind of mix things up in the studio and then make it a bit more interesting for my DJ sets as well. I think that's important. Oh, yeah. Well. yeah, it actually sounds like, you know, a maturing Dan Stone. <laughs> exploring yeah. new kinds of music uh, that would be interesting i actually yeah. had, i had no idea you do progressive i actually would like to really hear something from you yeah right well, it's the difference with, like a lot of people at the moment you know prog, prog or progressive house is is obviously popular but you know i've just kind of notched it and still kept it for the all about the kind of melodies and the, the, the kind of chord progressions as well but just a slower groove and i did do a few bits you know back in 2012 13 um for various labels so i'm not completely new to it but um techniques and sounds have changed a lot since then so it's been quite a um quite a lot of work to put in to get the right groove especially the groove and bass lines have changed a lot so um that's been quite difficult but no yes yeah, it's, it's so far it's going all right so i'm, I'm enjoying it a bit of a rush. Well, over here, uh, Robbie Simmons is actually saying uplifting is life and a big smiling uh, smile face. <laughs> that's the uplifting. That's, that's, well, that's the that's, family for you. Uh, yes. We also have like uh, one uh, question here from uh, Sion Rai Music, and she's asking if you uh, are you into like EDM kind of prog house, dub vision kind of stuff? Uh, do you know what? I haven't listened to much dub vision sort of sound, but um, EDM sort of prog house. Um, not quite as much, not my sort of top of my list, but I'm, I'm never really kind of dismissive towards, you know, other genres. I always respect and appreciate, you know, even the sort of the techno scene. I quite like a lot of that stuff at the moment and, mm. you know, and, 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 and the disco house sound scene that's kind of coming back around again, you know? So, yeah. Yeah. I do listen to other sounds. I like a lot of drum and bass as well. A lot, especially the sort of liquid stuff. Yeah, yeah, I love drum and bass. <laughs> I know, but one of your tracks from your album was was, was an album. Yeah, it was. But well, you know, I used to do drum and bass before from like 2000, oh, did you? 2006. Oh, and mostly just for ourselves, you know. And we had a crew, and we were just traveling in Slovakia. And uh, yeah. one of us was always the MC, the other one was a DJ. Oh, awesome. We were called Rice and Chicken. <laughs> <laughs> That's one interesting name. Reorder that really is. Well, uh, it it came from he was he was sequence and I was reorder, so it was R and C. I was like, okay, we can't uh, okay. sequence because on on that we were actually doing more trance side, yeah. but we love drum bass as well. So we said, okay, R and C, rice and chicken, and, <laughs> and then actually it was it was the same guy I collaborated with on the album. Yeah, awesome. I have I have some questions here for you from our viewers. Okay, so the first one, then. Who are your influences? Uh, uh, the question came from Elon King J. Oh, influences? What, old or new? Can it be anything? Or I'd say 
I would say musical influence is probably yeah, yeah. I'd, I'd say about. when I first started, because I think that's kind of, you know, when you're first getting into sort of the trance scene, that's a buzz from then. Um, you know, I was into probably similar to you guys. You know, I was I was a huge Signum fan, massive <clears> Signum <throat> fan when I first started. Um, I think Signum and Agnelli Nelson were the two, the two producers that really got me into trance like heavily. Um, <laughs> so that kind of sound when you had Agnelli Nelson doing the like every day and El Nino on Extravaganza, and then you had Signum on a slightly tougher, techier sort of groove, and yes. that, I just thought their stuff was phenomenal. Um, so, so really cool tracks. Yeah. Yeah. Nelson. yeah. So they were the kind of ins inspirations for me when I first started. Really, I think that's probably the best way to answer it because um, these days when we're working alongside those artists, you kind of you know you've got you, you look to other genres for inspiration obviously people like eric fritz and you know and djs like carl cox and people like that who are you know, who, who are amazing just as as acts and an artist and their productions and their live sets but i think going from the start i think people like signa and Nelly nelson were my kind of yeah mm. as well as people like obviously you know above and beyond and uh, acts like that but I mean, this is, this I, is I actually wonder where these guys went, you know, I really missed that sound they had, you know, it was it was really pure and really different from what we're hearing right now, you know, those melodies were just, you know, like different kind of vibe. So I'm yeah. really gone. A lot of people, a lot of people talk about that. And I kind of, I kind of sit on the fence a little bit with that, with that view, because mm. I love you know, obviously, I know them. I knew them well, and they, they helped me a lot in, in my early part of my career. Um, and uh, you know, back then, yes, it was the style that that we all love. You know, the kind of um, tri-state and th th those sort of tracks. But um, you got to remember as well is that they've built a brand and they've built their sound over the years, and they've they're just they're in their own complete niche market of, of their own sound now. You know, they took it to America and took it globally, and above and beyond are this just <laughs> huge brand now and their sound and yes it's not as uplifting sounding um but they're clearly doing something right aren't they so uh, oh, if we for them. exactly and, and respect for them for doing what they've done you know um you know for, for changing their sound and, and going in their own direction full respect to that um but um I yeah. No idea. yeah they did that you know i just thought they just stopped music <laughs> <laughs> this is news this is news. News alert. What, what, what do you mean? <laughs> I had no idea. Yeah, they kind of, yeah, well, I, you know, I suppose they, yeah, they did change, but they didn't change overnight, did they? They changed gradually. Yeah, over, gradually. Over, like, over most most, most guys did it. I remember Sandra van Dorn did the same. He went from yeah. trends <laughs> to more like progressive house, and now he's coming back into like this old school style of trends with his purple hair stuff. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah so maybe they come back again with something new, you know? Most of them did. So, yeah. And uh, I have this a really interesting question here. Uh, well, there's two guys asking similar questions. The one, yeah. the first one is from uh, Moises Santana 311 is asking, who would you like to collaborate with? And then Andre Pinheiro 10 is asking, reorder and Denstone collaboration? <laughs> <laughs> well, firstly, we, we've talked about this for quite a while, haven't we? Um, yes. And we've kind of thrown a few ideas backwards and forwards over the years. So, yeah, maybe that's the time we sorted something out, maybe. Uh, well, right now, happened. we have time. But the we have time. Yeah, works. we have time. Uh, are you exclusive to FSOE? No, no. Ah, so then, then we can do it. Because I'm <laughs> exclusive at Armada, so I can't do call-ups outside. You know, it's, uh, no, no. I, I, even though, obviously, you know, I obviously co-run Fables with, with, with Fairy Tail, um, it doesn't mm. mean I'm exclusive to them. Yeah. So. So, as I've had various releases on other labels. But as for a collaboration, who I'd like to... Um, one of the names I've always really liked, I've always been a massive Seven Lions fan. Um, I've always loved his sound, um, you know, his, his, his dubstepy or kind of uplifting dubstepy sound. And, um, you know, I've been talking to them, the label now and then over the last few years. And um, it'd definitely be something that I'd like to do, just for a fact, and not necessarily something that would always fit into my sets. But if I was to do an album or something, I'd love to collab with someone like him because this, this just sounds just spot on, you know, it just it's the production yes. sound is so clean and crisp and the bottom end is just so, yeah, it's just so heavy. So, yeah. Different gender, so but so much energy. So much Exactly. Energy. Yeah, that's what it is, isn't it? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Sorry, I hit here a little because I've <laughs> something special here ready for you. Uh-oh. I, uh, last week, uh, or two weeks ago, I did this with Mark Sixma, where I basically asked him seven questions. Okay. 
and they are rapid questions. Right, so, okay. Let's get into it. We start. Yeah, I'm, used, with... I'm used to this, so go on, here we go. Yeah, it's, it's pretty simple, and you get points if you answer correctly. Okay. And I have to tell you, a Mark Six mod, it's seven out of seven. Oh, shit. Oh, dear. Oh, sorry. Yeah, yeah, sorry. <laughs> okay, the, the, the first one is really simple. Okay. Dogs or cats? Dogs. Dogs. Nice. You have one point. Okay. <laughs> okay. And now this is uh, this is one a special one. If Lord Voldemort offered you a hug, would you accept? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I would. I don't know if I sh should give him a point or not. Yes. <laughs> okay. Yes. Okay. <laughs> right side. Two, two, two points. Come on. Here we two go. points. Okay. Uh, if you were really hungry, would you eat a bug? Like really hungry. Probably, yeah. If I was like, like almost, yeah. If I was almost at my deathbed, hungry, then yeah, yeah, you know, would. Well, yeah. Crab is basically a bug just from the sea, right? Yeah. So yeah, let's say yes. Okay. Yeah. Uh, this is a tricky one. Black tea or Earl Grey? Grey, Earl Grey. Oh, Grey. Earl Grey. Yeah. In he's English. He knows what he is. <laughs> Okay, this one is a hard one. Burgers or pizza? Oh, that is really tough. Pizza. Okay. This is a tricky one. So I'm giving points for both of them. So, okay. and now I think we only have two left. So, <laughs> what's the most useless talent you have? Use useless talent? Yeah, you have. Yeah, oh, that's tricky. Um, uh, I'm not very good at quizzes. I'm rubbish at quizzes. Is it I'm talent? Not... Well, is it? Is it a talent? Uh, I suppose it is. A talent. I have a talent that I can always uh, throw rubbish into the bin. You know, and I always. Hit. Oh right, okay. But um, it's useless. <laughs> <laughs> I can't really think on the spot now. Isn't really anything that I am. Um... No, that's it, really. So you're saying that, uh, that is, is it a talent that I haven't got or have got? Yeah, it's that you have. But I can change it for you. What is the talent that you always wanted to have? <laughs> I'm a tricky one, this now. Yeah. I'll tell you what it is. Being able to fart whenever I wanted to. Imagine that. Yeah. I actually have Just a friend that tap. always comes to me and says, can you uh, like pull, pull my finger? I pull his finger, yeah. he farts. Yeah, I, I'd love to be able to, to fart and then make a tune out of it. So I'd be able to do it whenever I wanted, but different tones. And I could Dude, just... that's like Guinness Book Records yeah. thingy, you know? Like, this man can do, like, nation yeah. with, with yeah, his that's it. There you go. It, 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 it's, like this, it's like this show on uh, Netflix now. It's called um, Afterlife with uh, Ricky Gervais. Oh, yeah. It's oh, a very yeah, funny guy, you know? He's so funny. Uh, they go to this lady, she has a son who can play the flute with his nostrils, you know, so he has two flutes and play. <laughs> <laughs> That's a talent, man. That is a talent. So, I mean, I so do that with you your arse as well. Fantastic. Imagine you could play a flute with your arse. <clears throat> well, I'm going to work on it. Well, uh, enough of uh, this dark uh, humor. <laughs> One last question. I'm pretty sure I already know the answer to. Do you own an umbrella? Yes. Only a little one, a little pocket one, sort of style. Well, not like that, more like, yeah. <laughs> not, not one of those massive ones that covers you, you know. Oh, man. Uh, okay, so I would say that's seven points. You passed. I'm going to put it here on the YouTube. Thank you very much. And I think we actually reached the end, man. And this was really nice. So uh, thank you very yeah. much. Uh, do you want to say any last words, maybe? No, just... Thanks for having me, mate, and uh, it'd be good catching up. Um, thanks for the comments from everyone, and um, yeah, just stay safe and healthy, and yeah, I'll uh, hopefully see you guys very, very soon. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you very much, man. It was a pleasure to have you, and it was very, also very nice to get to know you better. Yeah. And, and uh, for you guys, uh, for our next one, if you have any guest in mind that you would like to see here in the Stereo Talk, just uh, message me on Instagram, Facebook, or comment below on YouTube. And uh, yeah, that's all for today. Thank you very much. And uh, see you soon. Bye then. Take care, guys. See you soon. Bye. Bye-bye. Uh, I don't know how to do it. Ah, here. <laughs>